In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill our hearts and kindle in us the fire of thy love. We pray, Lord, that we may speak the words that you desire us to speak, that we may hear you inside our hearts. Lord Jesus Christ, please cover us in your most precious blood. Please cleanse us and purify us and help us to become saints. Saint Catherine of Siena, pray, pray for, for us. us. Saint Gemma Galgani, pray, pray for, for us. us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Hello, and welcome back. I'm Emily, and this is... I am Thomas Martin. Thomas! So, how do we know each other, Thomas, or who are you? Sure. Uh, we uh, know each other through the Catholic young adult community. Mm -hmm. Um... And we went to Northwestern together. We did, but I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a story. Um, some of you may know I have like an insane photographic memory for faces and people. It could be years mm -hmm. uh, from the last time I saw somebody and I'll recognize them. If it's their side profile, I recognize them. So, so what, no criminals are getting past you. No one's going to pass me. So, uh, I recognized you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we were on campus probably five, six years ago at this point. Yep. And uh, we're old. Well, yeah. young old. We're young old. Young old. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, we were on South Campus a lot. You were doing theater, mm -hmm. and uh, I was doing music. So we were crossing paths. Never even knew each other back then. Not at all. Just crazy. Crazy. And uh, yeah, here we so, are. So, music. Do you want to talk more about music? Yeah, sure. Well, I've always been a musician. Mm -hmm. um, what do you play? I play trumpet mainly. Um, it's my full time gig right now. Um, but I've always been a musician. I think I've always had um, a good ear mm -hmm. for music. Mm -hmm. um, my grandpa has always been a singer, my dad sings, uh, my two sisters have always sing, sung um, in the car and mm -hmm. they were in mm -hmm. choir. Um, so I've always had this good ear and I always knew I had a good ear. And then in middle school, I had the chance to pick an instrument to play mm -hmm. in band and I picked trumpet. And it took me um, through high school, pretty much through college and I'm doing it professionally now. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just always been a part of me. If you look closely, I've got like a, a scar on my lip mm. of where that mouthpiece sits. So I, I've got a lot of practice, a lot of, a lot of practice, <laughs> a lot of mileage. On Worn this in. Yeah. So, what is your gig now? W where are you playing trumpet? Yeah. Sure. So I am playing trumpet for the army. Mm -hmm. um, so you were in the army. Yes, I've been in the army for six years. This October. Mm -hmm. I'm an intelligence sergeant um, and a freelancer for work. Um, but uh, I, I just recently I started doing these military funeral honor details. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, the gig is you go out to the, where the funeral is gonna be, um, usually the cemetery. And as a trumpet player, I'm go in there to play taps mm -hmm. um, and it's a great honor to be able to perform that. Um, the families really appreciate it and I get a lot of meaning out of, out of this gig. Mm. How, do you, how do you get meaning out of the gig? Um, well, first of all, you notice people's emotions mm -hmm. and day to day you don't see people crying. You know, you don't see people weeping or mm -hmm. um, being sad. So you go to work and you witness some emotions that we all have that we don't express every day, but they're inside of us, just waiting right. to come out. Yep. <laughs> so um, I get a lot of meaning out of out of this job. Mm -hmm. So. Do you find that, yeah, this is not a question that I asked you before, but do you, do you see any um, 
overlaps or growth between what you do with music or the trumpet, particularly playing the taps, and faith, like a, like an evolution in your faith life or some sort of overlap? Yeah, there is. Um, the trumpet itself is so symbolic in the mm -hmm. Bible and, um, and popular culture, too. The trumpet is, when it sounded, it's a call. It's always a call. It's, a call. it's, it's an invitation mm -hmm. or it's a, um, a warning. So I guess never having thought about it before really being Catholic, the some symbol symbolism of what I play mm -hmm. um, is 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 related to the faith. Yeah. Um, so I don't. Know, I hope that kind of yeah. answers your question. Well, actually, you relating it to the Bible, I didn't even re like. Yeah, in the Psalms oh, of David, so like yeah. praise him in the trumpets, praise him in the lyres. Like yeah. it, it's always there. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is. So. Um, it's, it's just, I, I love the instrument mm -hmm. even more now that yeah. I am, since I am Catholic, yeah. I love the instrument even more. Mm -hmm. And it's given me a lot of new meaning mm -hmm. um, playing it. Um, what was burnt out before um, of playing trumpet. And... Uh, you were burnt out. I was burnt out. Mm. Yeah, going through high school and then college, playing every day, um, every kind of music. Yeah. Um, just, I just got burnt out, and, you know. I advanced very quickly early on with trumpet. Mm -hmm. um, took me all over the world um, and just burnt out. So, and I, I, that happens, you know, to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, it usually leads to lots of reflection, self-reflection, and um, exploration. And finally, I feel like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I can play trumpet again and feel good about it. Yeah. So do you want to talk about your journey, like diving into Catholicism? Yeah. Like what, like what was your call <laughs> like to um like to faith um going to the all souls day uh mozart requiem at saint john Cantus in 2019 um was the big call mm. you literally have trumpets there you know mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so um that was the big one for me yeah. Um, I was getting deployed in early December, early 2020. Okay. So um, going to that mass and hearing the music and seeing all the people mm -hmm. just uh, reignited something in me that I had lost mm -hmm. uh, years and years ago. Yeah. So it just made me hungry to learn more mm -hmm. about the faith. And um, just to immerse myself in it and mm -hmm. all of its beauty and elegance. And yeah, that's how it started. Yeah. Um, and how has it progressed? Or how do you, how, yeah, like how do you stay faithful or deep in your faith? Or like what are those things that you do? Yeah. Um, it's, it's a daily, it's a daily mm -hmm. um, gift yeah. to be Catholic. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, bef before, really before that Mass, I was just thinking about this yesterday, before that Mass, um, for years, Friday, I'm going to get a burger, you know, maybe some lamb chops, all that steaks, meat, all that meat on a Friday, <laughs> mm, mm, mm. we made it to the weekend, let's celebrate, mm -hmm. and now today, I don't eat meat on Fridays, like, yeah. I could, like, uh, that's just, I'm not going to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just, you know, I've changed so much. Yeah. Um, and I'm very happy about that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, you just 
you no know, meat on Fridays, yeah, it's it's um, it's a little humiliating sometimes. Oh, you know, I can't eat what I want. My friends are eating this mm -hmm, and that, mm -hmm. but uh, that's so important uh, yeah. for being Catholic, I think. So uh, other things I do daily, morning prayers, evening mm -hmm. prayers, mm -hmm. um, you know, try, try to do the five precepts of the church in my daily life. Okay. Just try to keep aware of what's coming up on the calendar, mm -hmm. which, um, you know, days of fasting and abstinence are coming up. Mm -hmm. um, which days of holy obligations, you know, mm -hmm. are coming up. I need to get to church. So uh, it's just a daily part of my life. Yeah. And you fostered community in Chicago around yeah. faith, too. Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Still waiting for you to come out. Right. Yeah. He has a running club. I don't run. Apparently, I could walk in walk. the running club, but... A lot of people sometimes just go for the coffee after. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Which I also haven't gone to. <laughs> <laughs> you can come to that. Coffee is great. Um, mm -hmm. I learned that way too late in life, how great coffee is and mm. caffeine. So. so faith and coffee. Yeah, yeah. It's the double. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So run club. Yeah. Oh, yeah, run club. So, um, yeah, um, came home from my deployment. And, you know, working out is just great mm -hmm. to begin with, get those endorphins going. Mm -hmm. And, um, but if you, to do it with Catholics too, you know, it's, it's kind of even better because mm -hmm. um, you guys got something in common already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so came home from my deployment, went on to Facebook, started this club. I said, hey, on this day, on this, at this time, we're gonna do a workout in the park. I'm going to lead it. It's going to be about an hour long. These are the exercises that we're going to do. Um, there's going to be music. And people just came out. Mm -hmm. and people just did the workout. And um, we, just, we just kept doing that mm -hmm. like on a weekly basis, which turned into uh, let's do something on Saturday mornings. Let's run. Mm -hmm. um, and let's get coffee after. Mm -hmm. And... Um, now the Chicago Catholic Run Club is a Facebook group. Um, it's got 190 members the last time I checked. There's a Facebook page that's got 20 followers. Um, there is an Instagram page. There's a website. Um, on average, you know, like half a dozen, a dozen people come out on Saturday mornings mm -hmm. and uh, run together. Mm -hmm. And then we'll get coffee together after. And it's really open to Catholics and non-Catholics alike. Mm -hmm. um, there's some marathoners in the group now. Um, and we got a couple things coming up this summer. Whoa. Yep. Uh, in June, we'll be running on the 606 trail. Mm -hmm. And getting <laughs> coffee after. <laughs> you cannot separate I, coffee from the running. You can't. It's got to be together. Um, so we got a run coming up in June and then another one in July. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, uh, I think in between that, there is a race, uh, at Soldier Field in oh, uh, July, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the Chicago, the, or the Big Ten K race. Mm -hmm. Some of us are doing that. I'll be representing Northwestern. Cool. Go Cats. I will not be running. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one day, maybe next year. Yeah. Um, and then I will be doing the M Milwaukee Marathon October 1st. Mm. That's 19 weeks out today. Mm -hmm. So in three weeks, I'm going to be starting a 16 week long plan mm. um, to get ready mm -hmm. for that. And my I'm goal prepping, is yeah. to just crush it. Okay. And like personal record yeah. that marathon. So. All right. Nice. The more you keep talking about marathons, the more I think about how the, it's in the New Testament. I don't know any Bible verses, but like the, like we have to fix our eyes on Jesus to run the race mm -hmm. for the crown. Yeah. Or like St. Therese's quote, like we know the way, let's run together. Yeah. 
And you know, I did that yesterday, or, or a couple days ago, I went on a run. Mm -hmm. um, I hadn't been running for a couple days, and I was like, I need to go on this run. I need to have a hard run right now. Mm -hmm. So, um, but and on that run, I was, I, I knew I was going to try to hit a really fast pace on mile six. Mm -hmm. That was my goal. And I'm on five, and I'm coming up to six, and I hit six, and six to seven, I know I'm just gonna go hard mm -hmm. and really push myself. And what I did was not look down for that whole mile. I just looked straight. Yeah. I looked at where I was going, and I did not take my eyes off of that. Mm -hmm. And I ran so fast. I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I took the time. I'm like, man, I ran really fast. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's just like the faith, you know, mm -hmm. and, and during that time, it's hard. Your body's yeah. aching, the lactic acid's building up. You're like, oh, I'm going to slow, I'm gonna, I need to slow down. And you just slow down, but mm -hmm. no, you don't. You just keep going. Mm -hmm. And, um, what that, that's, that's like the faith, mm -hmm. you know, times are going to be tough. Um, you know, your friends and family are going to say, oh, you're doing what? You're going to mass. You're, you know, you, you do this, this, that, that, that. Um, but you just got to have your, your eyes on the goal and just keep going sometimes. Yeah. But it, it reminds me of in John when he says, like, you are sorrowful now, like a woman becomes sorrowful when she's in labor, but you will have joy, right? Once you, like, see the baby, once you, like, get there. That like all the pain of the suffering, but if you keep your eyes, your your body's like, no, we can't do this. But then when you get the time, you get there. Yeah. You're like, okay. Yeah. It's all worth it. Yeah. Embracing suffering. Mm -hmm. Is there? Yeah. What do you think is like, um, like the hardest thing for you to do? Like, is it embracing suffering? Is it like, assenting your will to like do a fast or? Like, is it um, like being kind in that moment that you're like angry at someone? You know, I don't think anything is too hard for me. Um, Whoa. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nothing, there's nothing I can't do. Mm -hmm. That's what I've been telling myself for years. Mm -hmm. um, there's gonna be obstacles along the way. Um, but never barriers. Mm. Um, so it's really hard for me to answer that question because, you know, everything is pop. Anything's possible. Mm -hmm. um, you just have to believe in yourself and uh, believe in where you're going. Yeah. Um, you know, kind of related to the the running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Story. That you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what, I guess, what is your um, hope or like aspiration for the future? And I guess, and I guess this is like, a, like it's kind of combined but separate of like being in the military as a Catholic, like what is that like? And then like what is, like what are you hoping like the future looks like? Those are like two separate questions that you can. Yeah, um, being Catholic in the military is great. Um, you pretty much just hang out by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> by yourself? <laughs> yeah, uh, it, I mean, it doesn't have to be a big deal that mm -hmm. you're Catholic, um, but the things that you learn in Catholicism can make you a great leader. Um, so, yeah, I mean, hopefully that kind of answers your question. Uh, yeah, um, what I hope for in the future, um, you know, I don't know, just peace, mm. no fighting, don't need a, mm -hmm. um, don't need, you know, more fighting. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So do you have any tip um, or like last um, like closing piece that you would like to give 
our listeners of maybe how they can like grow their faith, grow in community, something that's like kind of on your heart? Yeah, um, this just came to my head uh, that same day I ran mm -hmm. last week. Yeah. Um, so I finished running and I was like, I'm not done yet. I need to keep, I need to keep uh, suffering. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I went to, uh, you know, uh, where we live, there's this little pull-up bar uh -huh. kind of station. Mm -hmm. So I went there and uh, did another workout, um, hung on the bars, you mm -hmm. know. And um, this might sound funny, but like our grip strength, Mm -hmm. That's what I left thinking about, like, was our grip strength. Hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's like the ability kinda, to hold on. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. To hold on. Um, it, it's so closely tied with masculinity, mm -hmm. but not just masculinity. Strength in general. Everyone has to have strength. Um, and I hung on that bar um, for I don't know how long. Doing, yeah. I don't know how many pull-ups. Um, but our grip strength is so closely tied, I think, to like everything that we do in life. Okay. Okay. No, all right. <laughs> Maybe, I'm listening. Yeah. yeah sell me. It. Sell me. Um, yeah. I mean, <laughs> let's talk about all the ways. I mean, <laughs> you're, what if you're, um, having to hold yourself up, mm -hmm. you're on a bridge and who knows, and you're, you have to hold on for dear life. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to tell your listeners is like, hey, just work on your grip strength. Like that, actually or like as a metaphor? Uh, I, like actually. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but it relates to a lot of things. Yeah. Holding on for dear life. God forbid that ever happens. Yeah. You, you want to live, right? You need to hold on to that bar, mm -hmm. maybe, or that ledge. Yeah. Um, and what I just witnessed at work yesterday was, um, and I see this every single day, but uh, the day might come, you might need to pallbear your dad, your grandpa, and your grip strength matters because where he's heading is way over there and you've got to carry him with your other brothers, mm -hmm. you know, all the way over there. And so um, your grip strength, men, Open in jars for your, <laughs> for your ladies, right? We we have to have the strength to be able to do those things. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, that's my la okay. that's my last message. Yeah, and maybe grip strength too in uh, <laughs> times of temptation to hold on yeah. to the foot of the cross. Doesn't it? Doesn't to, it relate uh, to that too? Yeah, that no one can separate us from the love of Christ except for ourselves. Yeah, I think that's a perfect way to wrap it up. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Thomas. Thanks, Emily. Yeah. Yeah, so subscribe, pleasure. like, comment, be our friend, all the good things. Sounds good. Goodbye. <laughs>